and um, it's the fifth month of the year. So may the light of God's word continue to shine in your life in the name of Jesus. May the Lord continue to open up more of himself to you in the name of Jesus. So this month, we are taking a series, Pursuing Personal Development. That's a series for the month of May. Amen? And the topic for today is Think Possibility. Hallelujah. I will start by saying that Personal development is also known as self-improvement, right? But we're talking about pursuing it intentionally. Pursuing it intentionally, actively, consciously. Amen. I said in the first service that one reason why I love this church is that we grow 360 degrees, 360 degrees. We grow all around. We not just learn the word of God for our spiritual life. We learn the word of God for our mind mentally. We grow mentally. We grow socially. We grow all around. Hallelujah. Emotionally. Because the word of God is the center of everything, right? By the time you learn as much as we teach, as much as you can learn the word of God, you grow completely, holy. Amen. Praise God. So I define that pursuit is the action of pursuing someone or something. Praise God. Amen. It's not something you do unconsciously. It's not something you do unconsciously, personal development. It's something you decide to do. I just defined pursuit. Pursuit is that action of chasing after something or someone. Praise God. And I'm saying that it's not something you do unconsciously. You just um, wake up and you, are, you don't chase after something without thinking about it, without being conscious, right? Somebody that's unconscious can't chase, chase something. So if you're going to run after something, you are conscious about it. You think about, okay, I need to chase this thing. I want to pursue this thing. And I was, I'm also saying to you that it, can, it may not be active. You may not be actively chasing after that thing. It can be passive, but it's conscious, right? You can be passively chasing after something. Well, if it works, it's fine. I'm just pursuing it in case it works. But you are doing it with your mind intact and believing that there's a level of success, right? So that's what it means to pursue something. So personal development is now self-improvement. You are not expected to remain the way you are every day, every month, every week. So what, we're, what I'm trying to, what we are trying to achieve with this series is that by the end of this month, we would have, even by the end of today, you would have been stirred up to start pursuing growth in every area of your life, not just spiritually, but even career-wise in your business and in all that concerns you. Praise the Lord. The Lord does not want us to be in mediocrity in any part of our lives. Amen? Any part of our life, be it in your workplace, the Lord expects excellence. That means he expects growth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. There are um, five areas that one can pursue personal development. There are five categories. There is mental, social, spiritual, physical, and emotional. But I didn't get you. Okay. So, but we are focusing today on our mind. Mind, mind, mind. Mind. Amen. That is mental development. So like I said, the topic for today is think possibility. Think possibility. And I, I know that we've come across that scripture that says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Or all things are possible with God. Right? All things are what? possible with God. So it means that God is a God of possibility. With us, it may be hard, it may seem impossible, it may seem a mountain too high to climb, but with God, say, all things are possible. Say it. With God, say, all things are possible. Absolutely all things are possible. So what that means is that while you are thinking possibility, it means thank God. Amen? Think God. God is possibility. There is no impossibility with God. Hallelujah. In your mind, it may seem it, it can't be done. It can't be done. 
but with God, all things are possible. Praise the Lord. I want to start by reading them. Um, let's start in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. It's usually very surreal when I stand here to bring the word of God. So I'm really, really grateful and I appreciate it. I appreciate Pastor Murphy so much. It's a privilege. I do not take it for granted. Amen. So Romans chapter 12. I'll read verse 1 and verse 2. Okay. I'll read verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. Let's read it together, everybody. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Read it one more time. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So do you see, did you note renewing? Renewing. It's not renew, it's present continuous. Renewing. So it's something you do daily, weekly, every time of your life. It's not something you do, it's not a one time fix all, it's a renewing, everyday thing. Praise the Lord. So it's just like when you give your life to Christ. If you give your life to Christ today, you know, it's not everybody that has that dramatic change that happens in their lives. The, to majority is that you have to, is a, is a work to be done, right? We walk before the Lord and be perfect. It's a walking. You walk. You walk. Praise the Lord. You now wake up and then you're perfect before the Lord. You walk. Okay? So, I'm re- the, the scripture we just read said, by the renewing of our minds, we are transformed. I want to ask you, is there anybody here that does, do not want to grow? Do you want, is, okay, let me put, do you, is there anybody here that wants to remain at the level they are right now? Nobody, right? Like you just want to, the way you are now, you're so comfortable where you are, you just want to be like that even in the next 10 years. Is, it, is anybody like that? Don't be shy, raise your hand. Nobody, right? Okay. What it means is that you expect that there's a change that should have occurred in your life in 10 years time. Heck, five years time, two years time, right? So how do you get there? How do you get there? Is it possible to get there by doing the same things you're doing right now? It's actually possible. Consistency. Praise the Lord. Depending on what you are doing. Amen. If what you do is, you know, anything beyond spending time in the word of God and praying, you may not get there, right? No, you will not get there. It's not me. You wouldn't get there. Praise God. So we are learning today. You know, this scripture is a scripture that almost every, we know it very well. We read it every time. It comes to us every day. But today I want us to actually think on it. Like, look into the scripture and see yourself transforming. It's something you want. It's something you desire to be transformed. But the truth is that until our mind changes, until there is a mind shift, your body cannot get to the place you want to get until your mind has gotten there. Praise the Lord. As far as your eyes can see, that means as far as your mind can fathom. Praise the Lord. It's not something you just, you know, wish. I wish that can be like this. If you want to be um, the president of Nigeria, if you want to be a governor of Enugu State, for instance, you say in five years' time, and you don't have anybody around you that is in politics, and you don't even care to get into politics, you only know, you know that I have a dream that I'll be the governor of Enugu State. And you just do your regular business, you go back home and sleep, come to church, lift up holy hands, go back home and sleep. What is the chances that you're going to be the governor of Enugu State in five years' time? 
absolutely zero. It has to take God lifting you. I don't even know. It, oh, it, plenty miracle is going to take plenty breaking of protocols. Praise God. The truth is, if you're going to get there, there is a working to be done. There is a renewing of mind to be done. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what it is you want to achieve. Is a working. Is a working. Praise God. Uh, the verse one. I want to just point out something in verse one, and then we take it from there. It says that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Living sacrifice. Living sacrifice. Everything that concerns your body, your mind, your soul, living sacrifice. Constantly burning on the altar of God. Constantly burning on the altar of God. And when you are burning, even if, you know, you're, when you're burning something, you hear it, it, it exudes some smell, right? So I gave an instant. I said, if you're burning a goat, if you're roasting a goat, Maybe here now, we, somebody brought one big goat for us. We said, okay, we're going to use it for our family festival that is coming up, <laughs> right? And we gathered and we, are, we killed the goat and we are going to roast it here. You know, somebody may not be here. Somebody may be outside church, but they will perceive that goat is being roasted somewhere. Is that correct? You go, the scent goes out far. Even if you don't know, you're like, somebody is roasting goat, but you're not seeing it, Right? It's the same way our lives become when we begin to burn for the Lord on his altar. Even when you are not doing anything spectacular, you are exuding this aura of God. You are just, you can just be dressed in any, however you want to dress, but somebody just sees you and just knows that this one is a child of God. Because there is a communion that you've had with God. Constantly having with God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So when you spend time in the Lord, in the word of God, praying the word of God, it just has a way of transforming you because your mind starts becoming what the Lord Jesus has spoken concerning you. Your mind begins to capture the things the Lord has already written about you, has said about you. As your mind is renewed, what happens is that the you you know now you begin to see a light of a different you in the light of God's word. God is seeing you like this. You are seeing yourself like this. But there is a word of God. And you are beholding that word. As you're looking at it, what happens is that the light of God's word begins to be imprinted in your mind and begins to change completely how you see yourself. And what happens is the way the Lord sees you in his word, you start becoming it. Praise the Lord. But like I said, it's an action. It's a process. It's something you actively do. Praise God. It's something you actively do. So renewing your mind is what bets transformation. Hallelujah. The renewal of your mind is what bets transformation. Amen. I love the scripture that um, the service manager read. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 to 10. Okay, let me, let's read it. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 to 10. Colossians 1, 9 to 10. Verse 9 says, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10. That you may walk in that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Praise the Lord. There is a relationship between have, um, fruitful work, being fruitful in every good work, and an increase in the knowledge of God. Praise God. I don't think it's possible to have good works without an increase in the knowledge of God. Amen. I want to tell you that this word that we, we, we listen to, that we believe in, that we study, 
is the center of our lives, is the powerhouse, is the control tower of our lives. Everything you need in life is centered in the word of God. Listen, even if it's in your business, in your career, the word of God has a way of setting you in the right direction for that thing you are already doing. Praise the Lord, all the things you are supposed to be doing. So the important thing I want to ask you right now is, how are you thinking? What are you thinking? What you think is important. What you think about yourself is important. What you think about your life is important. So what are you thinking? Are you thinking yourself as a regular girl on the street? Are you thinking yourself as a regular um, wife, regular husband, just the average Christian? What do you think about yourself? Are you thinking about yourself, uh, well, I'm just a businessman, and that is it, I'm just a businesswoman. What exactly are you thinking about yourself? Praise God. When I, when I think about think possibility, it just tells me that, you know, there's a, I, 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 somebody told me that he did, he did a course, um, a, a course that says um, how to think outside the box. It's a course. Somebody took it online. How to think outside the box. Like you're actually taught how to think outside the box. Praise the Lord. This mind the Lord has given to us is powerful. It's powerful. Like, if it's not important, the Lord wouldn't have given it to us, right? He gave it to us so we can use it. Use it to bet things. Think things and bring it to reality. Praise the Lord. So it's important what you think. What your mind captures is important. That is why if, if all you see is negativity then there will be no wonder your life will be filled with negativity. If all you think is bad, you will struggle. Praise God. There's something that I, I know major, many people also do that thing. When I, when I want to buy something in the market, I'll look for Maybe it's a shoe. I'll just be like, hi. I know that today that I, I came to buy this shoe. I will not see the shoe I like. We just say it consciously, right? You just say it. Today I came to buy clothes. I know I will not see the one I like. And you end up not buying what you like or not seeing what you like because you have thought it and you have said it. Praise the Lord. So do not take light what you think. So the, the, this service, what I want to achieve in this service, what I believe God wants to achieve in us, this service, that we go home thinking God possibilities. We go home thinking God. We go home thinking the right thoughts. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We need a mind shift if we must develop ourselves, if we must have self-improvement, if we must improve ourselves. There's a mind shift that we need. You need to start seeing things differently. If everybody tells things this way, can it be sold differently? If everybody is taking this way to market a product, can't it be marketed differently? Mind shift. And as you begin to think on the word of God, there's a way the Lord, the, the word of God gives us light. And you begin to see things in a different dimension. And you'll be doing the same business Mr. A is doing. And people are wondering, why? how are you getting the success you are getting? Praise the Lord. How are you getting, achieving this rate of success? Amen. Nobody says you must get to the age of 60 before you, have, you are living your fulfilled life. Nobody says that, right? So that is why it's important that we dwell in the word of God. Joshua chapter 1 verse, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, right? Joshua 1 verse 8. Let's read it. I want us to read it quickly. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Okay. I think, okay. Let's read. The book, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success from where in the word of god it doesn't matter what you are doing it doesn't matter if you're a business person it doesn't matter if you if you are a, um on air personality it doesn't matter what you do the point is that in studying the word in dwelling in the word of god you get good success you make your way prosperous praise the lord and it is the word of the lord we dwell in that can affect our minds so we can start capturing the will of God for our lives. Praise the Lord.
Your life goes in the direction of your realest thoughts. Your life goes in the direction of your realest thoughts. I already said before that your body cannot get to the place where your mind has not gotten to. So it's very important that you start thinking right, thinking the word of God. Now, how can we see ourselves? How can we think the right thoughts? We think the right thoughts by spending time in the word of God. Our minds being renewed, then we find ourselves becoming transformed into that image of Christ, into that person the Lord calls us to become. Praise the Lord. There is no impossibility with the Lord. Now, growth or personal development, self-improvement is is a, is a process. It's not an instant thing. It doesn't happen overnight, right? You do not wake up and you have you are you are now if you have four inches today, four feet tall. You do not wake up and you are six feet tall. It's a process, right? You start growing inch by inch, and then before you arrive, you have grown. So it's it's not a it's not something you just wake up and you are already grown. Personal development is a process. It's something you do daily, consciously, until you start attaining, you see yourself becoming the person you want to be. Praise God. So let's read Mark chapter 4, 26 to 29. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. I just want to bring you out there that the word of God that we, we take in is what, it takes time, it builds up. It builds up. The more you take it in, the more it builds up. Hallelujah. Okay, let me read verse 26. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how for the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Hallelujah. So when you are taking in the word of God, it does not grow overnight. I said, in the face of trouble, you do not just open a scripture and start quoting it and expect it to work. Amen. If you encounter trouble right now, you don't just flip a scripture that you don't know before. You just ask, okay, let me Google, Google safety, safety scriptures, preservation scriptures. You get one and you start it, or you need finances, you now run and Google one finance scriptures and it, does, it, won't, it, will, it won't work. Praise the Lord. It won't work because first the blade, then the ear, and then the full corn. So it's something you take in and you take in and you take in, your mind being renewed, you keep taking it in, your mind keeps being renewed until it becomes your reality. So in the presence of that, in a, in a, in a, in a challenge, facing a challenge, you do not need to go and start Googling anything. It's in you already. You know what the Lord says concerning you about that matter. So it just flows out of you. Praise the Lord. It just flows out of you. It's no longer, I have to, okay, what can I do? What can I do? It just flows. Praise the Lord. So the important thing is that we begin to build that ability to grow in the Lord. Actively doing the things we need to do. Actively spending time in the word of God. Searching out scriptures, what the Lord has spoken about us. Searching out scriptures of what the Lord says we should we do or what he wants us to do. You know this, that um, what, there are so many things we may want to learn, but it is the Lord that will give you sense of direction, what you should focus on at every point in time. Praise God. You may want to learn so many things. You may want to learn how to be a public speaker, how to teach, how to make soap, how to do plenty of things. But you may be chasing things. You may be actively chasing things in the wrong direction. It doesn't have anything to do with where you are going. But there's something about knowing what God wants you to do and you're actually chasing things in the right direction. So you get that right direction in the word of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I said before that we should desire to think the thoughts of God. Now, if we can get to the place where we see ourselves, do you even see, you have to see yourself first there, right? Do you just sit down? Most times we, sh we shun thinking. We don't want to think. We don't like to think. 
you know, distractions are all over the place. You would rather spend time pressing your phone than actually sit down and think. Amen. But you know that thinking is, you learn to think. It's something we should do. Something close about meditation, meditating on your life. Okay, thinking something through. Praise the Lord. So thinking is an act we need to do. Now, about the focus is what you are now thinking of. The truth is that whether you like it or not, you are always thinking something. So it's about consciously thinking the right thoughts. The mind has a way of going all over the place. If I say, begin to pray in tongues now, and we begin to pray in tongues, what happens to your mind? You all, the, all the imagine thoughts will be all over your mind. Like, you'll be praying in tongues, but plenty of thoughts are all over your mind. But when you, you, it's now that actively and consciously saying, okay, no, I'm not going to think this. I'm not going to think that. This is what I want to think. That will keep your mind stayed one place. So what is that thing you're going to keep your mind thinking on? The word of God. The word the Lord has already spoken to you. So don't allow your mind to be all over the place. Consciously say, this is what I want to keep my thoughts on. Think possibility. Praise God. Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 20. I'll read verse 20 to 23. Proverbs 4, 20 to 23. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Go on. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Out of it flows the issues of life. Praise the Lord. You know, I... Funny enough, I, I, I don't have time for a long time. I don't have time for WhatsApp especially. But yesterday, I don't know what took me there. And I saw what um, um, one of our mommies in the house shared. She made a quote. And I said, okay, this is good. I wrote it down. It says, you are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. Praise the Lord. I saw it and it blessed me. And I'm like, okay, this is why I came to status because throughout the week I've never been in anybody's status but yesterday I just I don't know I'm not, I'm not supposed to be there at all but I was there and I saw it I saw that I said okay this is why I came I wrote it down you are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> God is good your heart is important I said, if you think you can, then you can. If you think you can't, you are probably right. Too. Amen. But you, in, it's all about what you allow to gain entrance, gain accommodation in your heart. Praise God. You must allow just what the word of God says to have dwelling in your heart. Leave no room for any other negativity. Praise God. It doesn't matter what it is. You can decide today that you want to be this person. You want to become this person. You want to become like this. As long as it is in the will of God for your life, you are going to become that person if you actively pursue it. But you must guard your heart. You must guard your heart against you can't. Against it is impossible. Praise the Lord. You must guard your heart against every negativity that is not the word of God. Amen. This, this is because, um, like I said before, that your life goes in the direction of your thoughts. So if all your, you believe in your heart is negativity, you will struggle. You will struggle. Amen. But just believe that it's possible. Let your mind be a well of possibility, like everything is possible. It may take time, but it can be done. It may take time, but it's doable. Let it be your, your, your mindset for, from today. Honestly, I want us to just start thinking of, I'm not, I'm, I'm not supposed to be like the, I'm not supposed to remain the way I am. Surely I have grown, but it's still, there's still a long way to go, right? So 
I, t- I, I, I'm, I told myself, I'm saying to myself, I should not be caught speaking the same way I'm speaking today in a year time or in two years time, right? I should not be caught talking the way I'm talking. I should not be seen doing the same things, living exactly the same way I'm living right now. It is not the will of God. And the same goes for you. You should not be seen struggling with the same things you are struggling with today in one year time. Amen. Amen. Self-improvement. Personal growth. Development. Is it possible? Is it possible? You have to think it. Believe it. Until your mind captures that you can become um, a, a manager of that company. You will never get there. You have to capture it that it's possible. Then you're doing what you're doing where you are. Doing it diligently. Serving there faithfully. But it's not that if the Lord, if the opportunity comes to you, your mind cannot even fathom it. You don't even know where to start. You you won't get there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I want us to begin to think, even as you're seated now, begin to let your mind think, what is God saying about my life right now? I use this example, and let me use it again. I said, if you want to start a business, and maybe you want to start producing sugar, you know, somebody would, the general advice would be, you want to produce sugar, Dan Gote is producing sugar. Are you, are, do you want to survive at all? Or you now say, you want to start producing cement. People will drag your ear and tell you, run, no, don't, don't near that place. Dan Gote will crush you. Physically speaking, is it true? God speaking, is it true? Eh? It's not true. Because you can rise and become greater than Dangote. Because Dangote is not God. Amen. He's not God. He's a man the Lord has placed at a certain level. So he's not a yardstick. He's not, ah, this place is, no, no. Praise God. But you have to think it. Allow your mind to go there. Allow your mind to go there. Allow your mind to to think you being big. Allow your mind. See yourself being the greatest preacher ever lived. Yes, see yourself as the the greatest preacher that has ever lived. The greatest miracle worker. The greatest man that walks before the Lord perfect. The kindest man in all the earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Did you know that it is Moses that wrote that Moses is the meekest man on earth? He's the one that wrote it about himself. Do you know that? He said that most, the man Moses is the meekest man in all the earth. So if I tell you to stand up and say, I am the meekest person in this church, can you say it? You first of all say, ah, you, want, you want me to get into pride? No, I can't say it. I can't say it. Praise the Lord. But we read it in the scriptures that Moses wrote it about himself. The truth is that if the Lord has said you are the greatest, there's no contention. You are the greatest. Praise God. You don't have to rub it off anybody. But you stand and say, ah, the Lord says I'm the greatest. I am the greatest. Your mind has to capture it. If it doesn't capture it, you can't say it. Praise the Lord. And what happens is you continue to fall short. You can't even get up to that standard because you don't believe, ah, is it really true? Ah, can I be that kind? Can I be that way? Your mind, you can't live like that. But when it becomes your reality, that the word of God says this about me, and this, that is who I am. And you live your, with shoulders high, believing this is what God said about me. This is who I am. Even when you fall short, you say, well, this is what God said about me. I may have gotten it wrong today, but this is what God said about me, and it is my reality. So first of all, there has to be that mind. You have to change in your mind. But you must guard your heart from allowing things that will corrupt your mind to get in and have it dwell in there. Praise the Lord. So it's not about what we see. It's not about what anybody says. It's about what the word of God says concerning you. It's about what the word of God says about us. Praise the Lord. We should breathe the word of God. We should live the word of God. Amen. The word of God is what should form, should what, is what should inform every one of our decisions. It is the word of God that should inform your decisions. Do you know that you can get by the word of God the business you should start doing? Yes. The exact business you should go into, you can get it by in the word of God. In the word of God. 
the course you should study, you can get it in the word of God. You can be um, a doctor. The, the, the specialty you should go into, you can get it just by studying the word of God. Suddenly, there's a light going in this direction. So you don't now follow everybody. Ah, this is where is, is everybody's going in this direction. Or you just go there because you feel like it. You just grow into that place the Lord wants you to grow because you already know. There is already a knowing. Remember, we read in Colossians chapter 1. That becoming full of knowledge by the word of God is what produces good fruit. Praise the Lord. So you will not get there and start struggling to bear fruit. You will not get there and start struggling to shine forth. Because in the first place, the Lord sent you there. In the first place, you know this is where I am supposed to be. So, there, you know, when you are there, because you know God wants you to be there, there's this, there's this fulfillment, there's this confidence you have that I am doing what God wants me to do. But when you are second guessing, I don't even know what I'm, I don't know. You can't produce fruit, good fruit. So much. Praise the Lord. So it has to be that this is what God wants me to do. So I want us today that by the word of God, you will allow the word of God to influence our thoughts, influence our decisions, influence everything that concerns us, our convictions, the things we believe. It's not every, belief, it's not every business that is for you. It's not every cost that is for you. It's not everything that is for you. Praise the Lord. No, it's not every, every part of life that is for you. There are things that are written about you in the word of God. There are things, specific things that are written about you in the word of God. You know, there are things when I read them in the Bible, I'm like, I just know. I just know this scripture is talking about me. I just know it. I just know it. This one is about me. So when you find that kind of scripture, what do you do? You spend time on it because... The more you spend time in it, the more you begin to renew your mind. And then you can transform into that person the word of God has said that you are. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us to read another scripture. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 32 to 35. Matthew 12, 32 to 35. God is good. God is good. Learning is the will of God. God wants us to learn things. God wants us to know him deeper, to learn about him. Learn about him. Learn his will for our lives. Okay, Matthew chapter 12, verse 32 says, Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. Go ahead. You, you brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Did you get that? The mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Another translation says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So verse 35 says, a good man, let's read it together, go. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. Did you see? Stored up. Stored up. Praise the Lord. Do you keep something here and come back and take it and you say, I have stored it? You don't, right? When you store something, you leave it there. It stays there, right? At least for a period of time. It's not a second thing, a, few, a day thing even. You don't say I stored my phone on the bed, right? You store something in a storage. Now, a good man can only produce good things from what he is stored of, what is stored in him. What it means is that if there are, if there are some dirty things in that good man, He's likely to produce or bring forth some bad things sometimes. Praise God. So let me also give this. Um, um, I, said, I had an experience yesterday. I was supposed to go for a meeting yesterday. I stopped a keke. 
And I asked him, okay, this place, how much? He says, 1,000. I said, okay, you don't know the place, go. You could, <laughs> if you knew the place, you wouldn't say 1,000. It's far. It, it, it's, um, I mean, the money is so much. The place is not so far. You know, I said, eh, how much will I pay? I said, 400. It's usually 500 to that place. But I said, okay, 400. Let me start from there. He said, oh, yeah, enter. I said, no, you don't know the place. Just go. This one, you're just telling me, enter. I said, you don't know the place. Go. He said, no, I should enter. And I just tilted my neck to enter. He zoomed off. <laughs> so he wants to tell me, like, why will you go there for 400 naira? I should enter now. I said, go. I'm not, don't worry. You don't know this. I should enter. So for me to bend like this, he zoomed. <laughs> I stood there. I just said, the only thing that could come out of my mouth is, God have mercy on you. But I said it in Hebrew. I said, Chineke meloge belle. That's the only thing I thought of. Honestly, I, I didn't feel anger. I didn't feel sad. And standing here saying it to you is a testimony from me. I am telling you, it's a testimony from me that I didn't feel anger and I didn't feel like, I didn't remember any other thing to say other than Chineke meloge. And I was even smiling. I said, ah, Chineke meloge belle. That's all I could say. I mean, that's all came to my mind. Nothing else. So it's a testimony I'm even sharing to you because I can't even believe that I'm like this now. Praise the Lord. Because I know that maybe a few years down the line, I could have remembered a very good thing to tell him. <laughs> that would make me, you know, feel like I feel justified. I would have remembered something. But I couldn't remember anything. Thank God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So this is what the scripture is teaching us. If you keep storing in good... Keep storing in good, renewing your mind. You keep storing, renewing your mind in the word. Is storing there before you realize it. In the face of anger, there you can't say anything bad. Praise the Lord. You can't say any negativity because your mind is filled with positive thoughts. Praise God. If if you if something happens, like you say, you know, you hear people say, "I didn't mean to say that." Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Or you abuse somebody. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to say that. Lord, forgive me. I didn't mean to say that. Well, maybe you don't mean to say that. But it's, 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 it's going to be said at one point or the other. Why is inside? Praise the Lord. You may not mean to say What he's telling you is that there is a work to be done. There is a renewing of mind to be done. Praise the Lord. Because a good man out of the good stored brings forth good. So if you at any point bring forth any, any, no matter how small it is, that is not good, there is still renewing of mind to be done. Praise the Lord. There's still a renewing of your mind to be done. And as we keep renewing, we keep becoming like Jesus. You will not, Jesus can, was never caught. No matter, with everything that the um, Pharisees and the Sadducees did to him, Jesus was never, there was never a time he, he, ab, he abused them out of anger. He did tell them brood of vipers, but he was not out of anger. It's not like he was, he felt bad, like about himself, that they did bad to him. It's that this is who these people are. This is who you people are, and you need to change. So, if Jesus was never like that, and he's our perfect example, then we should not be caught living like that. Praise the Lord. Our mind needs to be renewed daily. Daily. Daily in the word of God. Think possibility. Is it not possible to walk before the Lord perfect? It is possible. Is it not possible to, to even in your business place, to walk in love? Is it not possible to be the most diligent person in your office? Is it not possible to be the most successful business person? Is it not possible to be the, the, the most giver in the Cornerstone Church? It is possible. But you allow your mind to get there. Store it in your heart. It is possible. I can be like this. It's not when we say, um, when we talk giving, you just shut your mind. No. Uh, don't go. Come out. Come out from there. Come out. Give it. Give, no, don't, when I want to give, I give, don't go there. Allow your mind to capture it. I can be a giver. I can be a giver. I can give a millionaire every month. You know, I saw, I, you know how social media is now. One day I, I just bumped into a, a chat. Somebody said, don't pay, you should not pay house rent with your husband. Don't pay rent. He's talking to women. Don't pay house rent. It's only man. 
your husband that should be paying rent. Do you understand what I just said? He said that a woman is not supposed to be adding money, like maybe don't add money. Maybe he said house things, do house things, but don't put money in rent. I don't know. Does it make sense to you? I said, me, I'm looking to buy a house that I will live with my husband. I say, don't pay rent. What is that? Don't pay rent. The house I'm living in with my husband. I should not pay rent. It doesn't make sense. You and your husband are one already. Don't allow your mind to start thinking those funny thoughts. Don't allow your mind to start collecting bad things and storing it up in your body. Allow your mind to capture good thoughts. Hallelujah. Build good things. Ah, it's, it's family, for God's sake. It's your husband. It's not another person's husband. And you're living there. You're living there. Praise the Lord. Why I brought that up is that we pick these things everywhere as we go. We don't intentionally say, let me think bad thoughts most times. But it just comes into us. And you see justifications. People comment and justify it very well. So don't allow this thing because it is not, it's, it's not in tune with the word of God. It's not in tune. You cannot explain it anywhere in the word of God that this is what God says. If, one, if your husband and wife are one, they are one. Whoever pays the rent is one. It's still one person that paid it. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So keep your mind stayed on the word of God. That way you can begin to, you know, your body will reject these things when they come. You will not think about it. You will not keep them stored. And tomorrow when somebody says, okay, talk to women. Because you have studied there, you, don't, well, you may not even be thinking about it. It will just, um, uh, uh, and I, where I will be where I am, and they say, God, have mercy. Praise the Lord. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What is in your heart? What is in your heart? What do you allow to have dwelling in your heart? What do you permit to have a stain in your heart? Is a work to be done. Praise the Lord. It's a work to be done. So I want you to think about it. Allow the word of God to renew your thinking. No matter what you're going through, even if you're going to make a business decision, it will be informed by the word of God. It will be influenced by the word of God. Whatever it is, even in raising your child, even in raising your child, your thoughts can be influenced by the word of God. So I want you to begin to pray right now where you are seated. Ask the Lord to help you. That you want your mind, you want to think the right thoughts. Ask the Lord to help you. That your mind will not veer off and begin to think all sorts of negativities. That you want to keep your mind stayed on the Lord. That is how you will have peace. That is how you will live a fulfilled life. Your mind being on the Lord. Everything is possible for you who is in Christ Jesus. Everything is possible for you. Oh shadala brade katolo vrede kete yada raba daba de shandala mbradosa katale granesh e raba daba de shadala bradosa kataya out of your heart flows issues of life and the word of god gaining preeminence in your life will put your life in that in that trajectory of success of the will of god of you being living a good life living a fulfilled life bearing fruit in every good work Oh, hallelujah. Are you praying? Pray with your heart. Pray with your heart that you receive the ability to think possibility. You receive the ability to think positive thoughts, to think the word of God for your life. Oh, that you are able to do things the Lord wants you to do. You are able to achieve the things the Lord has put in your hands to do. You are able to get the things the Lord wants you to get. Jesus is the center of our lives. And we have all we need in Christ Jesus. Believe it. Allow your mind to think these thoughts. See yourself completely healed. See yourself walking in the, in the light of God's word. That is who you are. That is your reality in Christ Jesus. That is your reality in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter how you are seeing it. Allow your mind to capture the reality of God's word for yourself, for your life. Allow your mind to capture God's word for you. Allow your mind to think the thoughts of Christ, to think the word of God as your reality. 
Oh, shada bada la brade kaso vele de getunda la bayada. As far as your eyes can see, as far as your eyes can see, see yourself as someone who does not struggle. See yourself, think it in your mind. See yourself as somebody who does not struggle about anything, who does not struggle with anything. Because the truth is that Christ has paid it all and has already given to you. We have victory. We have that victory in Christ Jesus. But we need to renew our mind and then align to it. This is my reality. I cannot be like this. No, I can never be like this. I am growing. I am growing. I am stepping out of this bigger and better. Because this is my reality. The word of God is my reality. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, my never day, Nana Mashatala, brother. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Rabadabado Shakalim Broto Sakala Dahash. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for your word is true. There is nothing you cannot do, O oh God. There is no impossibility with you. Our minds will begin to think possibility from today. We we'll begin to see ourselves in the light of God's word. We we'll begin to see ourselves to be who the Lord wants us to be. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name. <laughs>